was when I started, wanted to start the webinar, but I just wasn't able to get into the software somehow. So I had to restart it. Uh, hopefully, Nenet let you know. I think he did, right? That uh, I had some delays there. So with uh, no longer uh, delay, let's get started. Wanted to take a look a little bit at chart patterns and candlestick patterns, basically, uh, in the financial markets, of course, Forex. And uh, we can take a look at some commodities. Just let me know if you have a particular uh, interest in a currency or instrument. First of all, though, two disclaimers. The first disclaimer explained the fact that this webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity to find out if this webinar is suitable for you. Second of all, uh, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right. Thank you so much for your attention there. So, uh, Admiral Markets or also, of course, AdmiralMarkets.com uh, is hosting this webinar. So quick intro here in case you are joining uh, this webinar for the first time. A lot of good info you can find here. At the top, you see some buttons uh, that might be useful for your navigation, uh, as you probably already realized. More info about Admiral Markets here and about us, uh, about uh, the, regulation, uh, the um, regulations and stuff. Also about where you can, uh, sorry, start trading where you can open an account, what kind of instruments you can trade, what kind of software you can use, what kind of analysis, uh, then the of sending and other tools, by the way, and on top of it, education, plus promotion. So a lot of good info, definitely encourage you to take a look after this webinar is finished. So let me uh, now open up the platform, MT4, and uh, or MT5, of course, is also just as good. I uh, need to still do that because I had to restart the PC, just need a, a few seconds here to get that running, and we'll uh, then start looking at the charts. Uh, useful tip, by the way, with an analytics market heat map, definitely very interesting. Let's take a look now as my platform is rebooting. You can see here the big winners the big losses all right you can see here uh another overview of the top movers here's a forex overview you can see pound pretty much in the upside a lot of volatility and uptrend on the pound pairs yesterday and here you see the currency ranges pound really big movement here number one at the moment swiss franc the least volatility. All right, and a surprising second for the Australian dollar. All right, so let's head over to the charts. I wanted to talk a bit about chart patterns today. And this is a strategy webinar, so we'll be you know, looking a little bit more from a strategic point of view than only analysis, or at least I'll try to do that. Uh, analysis can sometimes be too... Uh, too interesting to, to do, but basically with the chart patterns, we're looking at classical tops and bottoms, of course, double top, double, double bottom, triple top, triple bottom, head and shoulders patterns, uh, rising and falling wedges. Those are typically reversal uh, chart patterns, as you probably know, but you also have continuation patterns like sideways movements, flags, triangles, and those typically indicate continuation. So what is happening with the euro dollar at this moment, I think could be a sideways movement for the moment, right? You can see price kind of oscillating between these two levels. And so far we have had a pretty good upside before that. So considering that, if price does not break below this bottom, the bottom of that sideways movement, I think there's a pretty good chance that price will find a bouncing spot here or maybe a bit lower at S1 and re-challenge challenge that top again. And if it breaks above that top, then there could be a 
potential higher high still like this and price can make one more upside and uh, that would complete five waves and i'm expecting a move down again like this so for the moment that's what i'm expecting unless price breaks below the s1 i would say and this bottom that would uh, make the overall analysis less likely so chart patterns are very useful for for multiple things for analyzing but also for trading and what i like to do with trading specifically is if i see a pattern let's take a look at one historical pattern because it's a little bit easier of course because we know what happened now we don't know you know obviously one way of trading this could be waiting for candlestick four hour candlestick uh, bounce at the s1 for instance or daily candlestick bounce but let's take a look at here one of my favorite ways of trading breakouts like this is to uh, see the see the pattern on one time frame but trade a pattern break actually trade the break after the break on a lower time frame so that could be uh, if you're looking on the four hour chart that could be an hourly 15 or 30 minute chart here so we get a break as you can see uh, on the four hour chart and we get a retracement let wait let me check one thing though one second yes good back to the 50 minute chart sorry for that all right there we go so we get a break pullback so often when you get after the break on a lower time frame you will get another pattern and indeed you see kind of a triangle formation here like this in, in, indicating uh, a, a pause so af often the break of a smaller pattern after the break of a bigger pattern right so i don't want to make it too confusing so this is the this is the this is the bigger pattern isn't it right and this is the break of the bigger pattern so the break of the smaller pattern after the break of the bigger pattern right you follow me right if you're not let me know through the chat is often a very interesting way of trading it because it's okay to trade the, the break on a higher time frame but this kind of avoids false breaks on average because uh, if it is a false break typically you would see price uh, move against you so you see downside correction downside for instance you wouldn't see this bullish break that often you can't avoid false breaks perfectly obviously sometimes even obviously nothing is a guarantee nothing is 100 percent. but i think this is a pretty uh decent way of catching a breakout so the breakout candle could be here and uh stop loss well that could be below this bottom it's a risky one because it's quite tight a safer stop loss would still be using the four hour low of the four hour candle maybe probably here i would say two options one is riskier but better r2r in case number one case number two less risky but worse r2r which is reward to risk ratio and up the price went as you can see and you get a good continuation all right way 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 further right so of course not every breakout will be as nice as smooth but uh that's a good entry now the exit depends if you're trading with the trend typically you can aim a little bit further you could use fib levels to get an idea about how far price could go put a fib from here to here look minus 272 hit minus 61 point a hit minus 100 hit you can use my whiz tool which uh, is a fibonacci sequence levels let's put that on i'm going to show you my my new one i have an old one too here we go and you can see hit the third level let's see it was already uh one second
Ah, that's right. Okay, doesn't matter. Hang on, hang on. Uh, where are we? A bit more back, I think. There we go. So you can see it, it had hit the fifth level. So from this point of view, the sixth level was the next target, which was right here, this dark green one, right? So that would have been help, helpful to establish maybe an exit at the minus 61.8 uh, fib. And it went all the way actually to the seventh level even, way further extension there on your dollar. So uh, that was, uh, you know, once you get above the fifth level, you do sometimes get very large pushes. And that's something that the WIS tool shows very neatly. All right, so that's one example of a pattern on the euro dollar. For the moment, I think the most important pattern, though, on this particular time frame, there we go. Is uh, the bigger swings here, as I said, on the four hour chart, these three up, down, down, up, down. Maybe on lower time frames, we could see something different. We see that price is kind of in a channel like this at this moment. So if price were to break above that channel, that could indicate also a potential rally against the momentum to the downside at this point. And it could indicate a, uh, a little bit of a retest, perhaps of the weekly pivot point or even higher, right? doesn't have to, as I said, it doesn't have to go to the S1 necessarily before it bounces. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on as well. This could be finishing basically, from a pattern point of view, this could be finishing probably an ABC pattern like this. So a break above local resistance, this trend line, these tops probably could indicate an upside breakout already. All right, um, pound dollar. We are seeing well, it looks a little bit like a wedge. So price would need to break out of that wedge, I think, to the upside for me to trade it uh, as a bullish continuation. Or if it breaks this trend line, right, then there could be a bearish breakout too. So those are the important trend lines for, for this particular wedge. And let's see uh, if it does break and when does it break. Well, it will, of course, eventually break, but um, or megaphone, as Flavio says. But the question is when, of course. So up or down break, I think both have their own advantages. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with either one. Uh, and, and they both could play out fine. I think maybe I would trade the break to the upside on this four hour chart looking for a four hour candle and the downside break, maybe I would rather wait for a daily candle close to break below it. Four hour candle close could be okay. All right, moving on. Dollar yen. Dollar yen did not make the downside that I expected here. The candle was quite indecisive. This this was not a bearish candle. Oh, it was a bearish candle, but I mean the close was pretty far from the low. So bears did not have control. Here was a bearish engulfing twin. So that's a candlestick pattern at the 50 fib that I think could hold. Uh, and we might see a reversal on the dollar yen to the downside. Now, this Price action has been pretty bullish. Let me renew this template. Has been pretty bullish so far. So, but ultimately, I think that this could be a hook back. Let's take a look at how many candles have since the high 12. It is a little bit tentative, this bullish price action, this bearish price action. So, maybe better to wait for a break and a break of the weekly pivot point, break of this, uh, this low, maybe here, this support level. All right, this could be a pullback. Ultimately, this could be a move down, pullback, and this could be a continuation. But I would rather wait for 
price to break through support because then it's more likely that this is a pullback. Now it could be a pullback, but for more downside, but it, it is also looking like a pretty strong channel. So I don't think I would like to trade to the downside in this channel. It is, doesn't have the angle of a bear flag. It doesn't look like a bear flag to me. All right, the Australian dollar looked bearish to me, but I was a bit hesitant to trade it uh, yesterday. And um, But it did move down. And uh, here we had a pretty good wick. Failing to break through this resistance, the moving average, the trend line, the tops here. So maybe you, you traded that. As I said, I was a bit hesitant. It was also during my night. I think it was after the Australian news. So if you traded the Asian session, I think you had a, a potential to trade it to the downside here. And uh, that was kind of like a pattern too. It was like a either a falling wedge or a descending wedge. So that's about it. I don't think there's anything else. Well, there's actually right now, there's a little bit of a sideways movement going on. Uh, not visible on the four hour chart, but maybe on the hourly chart. So could be good maybe on a five minute chart if in the next 12 hours maybe there is a break. Wait for a pattern on a five minute chart. Break of that pattern, there could be break, pullback, break, pullback, continue there. Could look like a bull flag. And did respect the 38. So yes, could still be a bull flag. So before that bull flag to be activated, it would need to break above the flag. It would, and it would need to break above some local resistance levels. It did bounce at support. So if we get the breakout, that could be a break of the bull flag. It's a pretty good example of chart patterns in action. If we get the break, first target would be the top. Oh, sorry about that. First target would be the double top because price does not have to break above that. All right, daily dollar cat daily. Uh, no patterns here that I think are very important to mention, but. Uh, Let's see. <laughs> ABC pattern. No, I don't see anything as yet. Urien had break of this triangle to the upside and seems to be making break pullback. This could be a continue. Uh, a little bit hesitant at this spot, personally. It probably will work out to the upside. But I would probably rather wait at this moment. I mean, if, you, if anyone took these one-hour candles, okay, but at this moment, maybe better to wait for two more hours to this four hour candles closed. Could be better, probably. Pound yen did make this bounce at about 149.50 area, 49.40 area. Someone was asking me what I thought about it via Twitter, and 
I said like, well, it uh, it is at a bouncing spot for the upside. I think that person was in a short, actually, if I remember correctly. And I said, well, it could be a bouncing spot. Unless it really breaks below 149, then, of course, you could have a breakout to the downside. And, um, yeah, I think, I'm not saying that this is has to be major bullish, but it does look like, a break pullback continue. I just liked other pound pairs more because they were less counter trend personally. So I traded pound CAD, I traded uh, pound odd rather personally. And pound odd is also making a, a good upside here. Something we discussed yesterday too. And I took that one and still in that trade, waiting for the next target. First target got hit, waiting for the second target now. And uh, regarding patterns, well, we had a triangle, right? And we had a break of the triangle to the downside. So, you know, this is sometimes a bit tricky. And obviously, you cannot avoid it. If you take this short, yeah, that would be obviously a loss. Unless you had the stop loss way up here, then it would still be running. But, yeah, those things can happen. Um, and... I mean, but if you look at the moving averages, it was still like bullishly aligned. So, you know, that could have warned you that a break to the downside is a little bit risky. But if you take the, uh, if you wait for a break on a four hour chart and then wait for a continuation on the 50 minute chart, I think you could have a chance to avoid it. Let's take a look. Uh, well, maybe it would have entered here, but it is a very small flag. I think I would have been looking for a little bit bigger pattern than that. With a pattern, you really want to look for 13 candles or more. This is more like five, but small. I wouldn't count that. I mean, it's always difficult to say after the fact, but I probably would not have counted that as a pattern personally. Could have been a five-minute pattern. But otherwise, it was a rock. It was a closing reverse. We didn't get a, a proper kind of triangle or, or flag like that. All righty. That was, uh, let's see, my two cents on the Forex market. Does anyone have a non-Forex instrument in mind? Do you want to take a look at the DAX, S&P 500 perhaps? Maybe... Gold, Angel. <laughs> Let's see. Angel is asking, can you please can you tell me what do you think about pound yen in the long term perspective? Do you have, do you think we have bottom and can expect upside? Great question, actually. Let's take a look. This pattern is, or this time frame is looking a little bit corrective this upside but it could be just a, a decent channel with a weak angle as well uh, so that's possible let's take a look let's put a fib on this first swing there we go and it's possible the price could go to the minus 61.8 target i think within this channel it bounced off the minus 272 target all right, so how far this correction can last, I'm not entirely sure. We did have some good momentum, but it is at the bottom of support. It is at the bottom of the channel. This could be a decent likelihood of a, of a bigger bounce too. It's not a guarantee, but if, if it finds its legs, then it could get it up. It could go all the way up to the minus 61.8 target. It's, it's, there's no guarantee. It could fail. It could move up and hit a head and shoulders level like this and move down again you know move up move down and retest the channel i think that is also very more likely maybe and then move up again so that is likely uh and from that point of view there is some upside potential but um i, I like the pound out more because it was more with the trend this was a breakout, but pretty heavily counter trend. But of course, if you keep the bigger picture in mind, and certainly it was at the bottom of the channel, and there's certainly reasons to see 
that they could bounce there and move to the upside. I think a better with this trend setup, though, it would be probably, and I don't want to trade too many pound pairs either. I already have pound cat. I had pound odd. But a width setup could be probably here at this point as price breaks through this trend line here. You know? That's a little bit in the future, as you can see. But that could be a good setup. Gold is doing great. Angel, I'm not sure if, if you managed to stay in that trade. Angel was already looking for shorts way up here where I was like, oh, yay, yay, yay. Looks pretty bullish, that price action. And Angel was already one step ahead of the market there. And uh, then we got a great job on that. And then we got bearish engulfing twins, which was a perfect candlestick pattern, bearish candlestick pattern that appeared at that resistance zone and, and down it has been going. So I think that looking pretty pretty good so far we, i think the next step is a break of this trend line probably for the for the bears it is still more or less stuck in between resistance heavy resistance and um and the support trend line it would need to break below the support for a further extension lower here to that level and, and that level then Let's see if that happens. And if it does break above resistance, then then uh, that would change things, of course, dramatically. Uh, so, yeah, for the moment, I mean, if we see some kind of flag here, that would be maybe better for bears because that could indicate, you know, some continuation, I would say, and a break below the support trend line. Angel says Camarilla and SWAT. Great stuff. Very happy that, that those tools are uh, helping. So let's see if we get a pattern here. That would be good. All right. So traders, if you're interested in, um, in the Admiral Pivot Points, if you're interested in Admiral Keltner Channel or the Mini Terminal or... A lot of extra features I haven't shown you. Just go to admiralmarkets.com, click on platforms, go to MetaTrader Supreme Edition, and you'll be able to download free for MT4 or MT5, and a lot of extra features besides those 60 plus in total. So I got a lot of tools to choose from. Um, if there are too many, which I can understand, then just test the ones that you think are interesting of course uh so that's what you can uh, discover in uh, it's a proprietary developed admin markets supreme edition all right otherwise of course looking forward to see you in more webinars tomorrow we continue with fibonacci part two nanet and i uh at the same time same place 4 p.m gmt time thursday so looking forward to see you there just go to education and click on forex and cfd webinars more analysis, as always, daily, of course. So looking forward to that. And uh, wish you all great trading in the meantime. All right? See you soon. Cheers.